many have hopes? You have hopes here this morning? And if you don't have any hopes, hopefully we can give you some hopes here before you leave here, that your hopes will become realities. Amen. And with God, that can take place. And I want to encourage you to have hopes. And then we're going to be talking about dreams, your dreams, having your dreams come true, true, true. And, and, and your desires, having those desires. So let's go ahead and pray as we get in the Word. Father God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to reveal your Word to us. We pray the eyes of understanding would be enlightened. As I open my mouth, I pray that I would speak the oracles of God. And Lord, I pray that every ear would be a listener. Every heart would be an open, receptive heart. And we pray that the good Word of God would fall on good ground and bring forth good fruit in our lives. And Father, we pray that you would draw each and every person closer to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. So hope is a feeling of expectations and desire for certain things to happen, especially uh, we, with the parents here, you know, Katie and Mitch dedicating their babies. They have high hopes. And I encourage you to have high hopes. And, and if your hopes have dropped, I pray they will be lifted up again today to be encouraged today. Now, Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so hope is that, that, that uh, substance <clears throat> of those things hoped for. New King James Version says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, New Living Translation said, faith is the confidence so and I believe God wants you to have confidence so we can have confidence what? Not just in ourselves, but we can have our confidence in God, having our confidence in him. So faith is the confidence of what we hope for will actually happen when it gives assurance of the things that we cannot see. You know, like when couples get married, they have high hopes. I had opportunity to join a, 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 a bride and groom in marriage this week, and, and they have high hopes. Uh, hopes for things that go better and th good things to happen in their life. And, uh, and uh, New International Version says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for, the assurance of, about what we do not see. But we can see those things in faith. See those things in faith. The good things that you want to come to pass in God. Uh, class, American uh, Amplified Classic Version says it this way. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Amen. The title deed. Like when you buy a house, you, you get what? And you pay for it. You get the deed to the house. You get the deed. And it's all paid for. Yeah, of things hoped for, the proof of things we do not see, the conviction of the reality, faith perceiving as real fact, <clears throat> excuse me, what is not revealed to the senses. The Message Bible says it this way. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God. So we trust in the Lord with all our heart. This faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd. Amen. And what it's talking about is, you know, you know Old Testament men of faith and even, uh, you know, New Testament men of faith. But he was talking about mostly Old Testament men of faith here uh, when, when the writer of Hebrews was saying this. So the first thing I want to talk about is desires. And hopefully you have some desires here today. But you want those desires to be what? Godly desires. Amen. And, and uh, Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in, also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The desires. Uh, a brother and I, we got to go down to Light of Life Rescue Mission. Brother John and I got to go down there. And then the guys, some of those guys are pretty down and out down there. And I, I told them, they had some desire. And I asked them, I said, do any of you guys desire to get married? And they were like, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, and it, maybe we have some guys here and ladies here that have some desires to get married. It's, it's okay that you have that desire. Amen. Amen. It's a good, it's a good desire. Uh, but delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, uh, Amplify Classic says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and secret <clears throat> petitions of your heart. 
That was one of my secret petitions of my heart. I want to be happily married, and I thank God, uh, Sister Melinda and I have been happily married for 37 years. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and uh, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Amen. If I can do it, you can do it. And thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Proverbs thirteen twelve says, <clears throat> excuse me, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it is a tree of life. So sometimes when that hope is deferred, then your heart becomes sick. But keep your eyes on the Lord. Some people, they, they, have a, they want to be married, and they have been married for a while, and then, then they, their, their heart starts to grieve and everything. Well, you need to just keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm just using that for an example. Whatever those desires are for you to be successful in life and everything, you just keep walking with God. In Genesis 18, verse 14, it says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for God? He's the one who created the universe. Nothing's too hard for him. Nothing's too hard for God. Isn't God good? And he said, at the appointed time, I'll return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. This is when the Lord was talking to Abraham. And he said, you're going to become the father of many nations. And he wasn't the father of anybody. But nothing's too hard for the Lord. And he did become a father of many nations. Mark chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus looked at them and said, With men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. And back at that time, they thought, um, you know, Jesus said, It's hard for a rich man to get to heaven. And and then uh, then Jesus said, uh, uh, But with God, all things are possible. Because you don't want to what? Be trusting in riches. You want to be trusting in the Lord. I mean, you want to be trusting in God. I mean, there's nothing wrong with riches, okay? Uh, uh, but we want to be trusting in God. Romans 8 verse 31 says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? And if somebody comes against you, you just shake it off. Brother Hagin used to say, Don't let it be like water off a duck's back. Just, if it comes on you, just shake it off. Let, let it come, come, come right off. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Nobody can be against you if God is for you. He who did not spare his own son, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen? So listen, God loves you, and he cares for you, and he's got a wonderful plan for your life. Amen? And he's not against you. But he gave Jesus for us. And so, how, so, so he, not with him, also freely give you all things. Now Philippians 4 verse 4 says what? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So that's what we need to do. Just keep on rejoicing. Wait, wait, what are we going to do? Just praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We had a secretary up, uh, 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 up in the office sometimes, and, and sometimes she would tell me some things that were going wrong. And, and uh, um, this is years ago. This, uh, this is when I was a youth pastor. And, and, and she said, Pastor Chris, something going wrong. I'd say, praise the Lord. She's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You need to just keep praising the Lord. Well, my, my, your car broke down. Well, praise the Lord. You're not going to sit down and cry, are you? Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, no. Let your gentleness be no, mean known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Amen. They let you go from your job. Be like, oh, no, I don't have a job. Guess what? You can have a better one. (laughs) You can have a better one. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
And so you need to meditate on these things. Uh, another version says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, what's are, uh, 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 no, in verse eight, it says, whatever things are true, what's are things are noble, what's are things are just, what's are things are pure, what's are things are lovely, what's are things of good report. If there is any virtue, if there is be any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And the things which you've learned and received and heard and saw me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Uh, um, uh, Psalm 37 verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Psalm 20 verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. What's the name of our Lord? Jesus. Oh, come on, that was pretty weak. <laughs> What's the name of our Lord? Jesus. That's right, Jesus. We're going to remember the name of the Lord our God, Jesus. Amen, is our Lord. Jesus is our God. He's the Son of God who took away the sins of the world. Amen. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I say, with things, whoever, with things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall what? Have them. Isaiah 54, verse 1 says, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, Break forth in the singing and cry aloud who have labored, uh, who have not labored with child. See, some women uh, believe, for, uh, uh, believe for a baby and some of them uh, don't have babies right away. And they're like, I want to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby. I want to have a baby. What am I going to do? Believe God. Believe God and sing and praise him. And he will give you a baby. He, amen. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand the right, to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced. And for you will not be put to shame. You will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the approach of your widowhood anymore. Amen. So there's desires. And the second thing I wanted to talk about this morning is dreams. In Acts chapter 2 verse 7 on the day of Pentecost. Peter quoted the word and says, It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. And I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I believe we're living in the last days. These are the last days before Jesus Christ comes back again. Amen. And it says, and your, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. But I want to encourage you to dream dreams today. Have good dreams. Amen. I know Katie and Mitch have good dreams for their family. Amen, friend, for their life. And you just keep dreaming good dreams. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, And the Lord answered and said to me, Write the vision. Make it plain on the tablets. I always say that every New, uh, New Year's in January. I always tell, tell everybody, write your vision down for the year. Write it down. Amen. I haven't accomplished all the vision that God, God has for me yet. Is there, I have a vision again that I get down to 200 pounds. I weigh about, I, I got close earlier this year. It was like 205. Last night I was about 214. <laughs> but I'm still shooting for that vision. You, you, you know, I write the vision. That's a small vision. I have other vision about saving money. You know, saving money. Yeah, you know, praise God, being blessed, prospering. Whatever your vision is and spiritual parts of my vision and plan. Write the vision, make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and the end is to speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And in verse 17, uh, uh, Habakkuk 3, it says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruits be in the vines, Though the labor of the owl fail and the fields yield no meat, the flock may be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I'll rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And we, and, and we, 
and he will make me walk on the high hills. You're going to walk on the high hill. Deer's feet, that deer can walk on top of the snow. The deer's feet. And they walk on those high places where God has for you. Amen. And his blessing for you. Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, A man plans, uh, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the, count, the Lord's counsel will stand. And Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, For the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So God has given us gifts. I believe each and every person has a gift. Each and every person that's born. And Katie and Mitch's daughters have gifts. Gifts that God gives you. And that God will give us gifts. And those gifts are irrevocable. He, doesn't, he never takes them back. Hello? And, and just use those gifts. Sometimes uh, people mess up with their gifts. But you can still use them again. You use them again and God will give them to you. And, uh, and that's where we don't give up. We just keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Don't give up. And we keep on learning. For the, for the gifts, uh, God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. In Romans 11 verse 29 says, For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Uh, amplified verse. He never withdraws them uh, once they are given. And he does not change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty. Never canceled. Never rescinded, the message Bible says. Amen. So there, there, there first is desire and then there's dreams. And then turning dreams, I want to talk now, into deeds. So a lot of times people say, oh, I have a dream, you know, I have a desire. And then I say, well, what did you do with it? And they go like, nothing. I was like, oh, no, you, you have to turn them into deeds. And you have to be real. I, when I was a youth pastor here in the church, a lot of guys in the youth group used to say, I'm going to be a professional football player. I'm going to be a professional. And I said, well, what have you done? I said, are you practicing? Are you sprinting? Are you, are you exercising? And they said, no, I don't have to do that. So at the time, me and Joe Campus, Brother Joe, he was helping with the youth at the time. And we were right over here, right over here at, on Ormsby. And we were like, okay, you're going to be, I said, why don't we race? Why don't we race? And he was like, okay, yeah, I'll kick your butts. You know, everything. I, and I was like, okay, let's race. Now, you got to remember, I'm just a fat little preacher. <laughs> and, and, and Joe's, and so we race. Do all three of us. Okay, Joe came in first. I came in second. And he came in third. And I had a, we had a serious talk. I said, brother, you're not going to be a professional football player. <laughs> I said, you're not going to be a professional football player. I said, you need to do something. You need to do something. A amen. And we were trying to help them. So you need to turn your, your, your dreams into deeds. Proverbs 29 verse 18 does say that where there's no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth law happy is he. So I encourage you to hold on to your vision. And have vision and run with the vision. Run with the vision. Don't let it go. And, and, and I don't worry, I'm going to get some encouragement here in a second. Because we're going to turn a little bit of di different direction to it so I can empower you and help you. And Esther 4 verse 14, Esther was there and they were in the land of Persia at the time. And they were occupied first with the Babylonians and the Persians. And then, you know, Esther uh, won the, queen, the, the, the beauty contest and everything. And then she got to be the queen to, to uh, 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 of Persia. And then uh, there was a decree. Haman wanted to wipe out all the Jews. And he was making gallows for all them to been wiped out. And, and Mordecai, her, her, her uncle who was looking after her because her, her parents passed away and everything. And, and he sees, and, and said, you need, to go, uh, uh, you, you need to go and talk to the king and try to save the nation of Israel. And, 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 and he said to her, if thou altogether hold thy peace at, the to at this time, there shall be an enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. For who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I believe we're called to the kingdom, church. We're called to the kingdom for this time. And let God use you. I don't want somebody else to take my place. Let God use you. And what you're called to do. I thank God for all the ushers, the greeters, all the people who help in the church. 
Amen. And whatever you're doing, and those people on the worship team, whatever, you, whatever you're doing in life, amen. So t- turn those, and that's what she did. She went before her, her husband, and he had to stretch out his staff, and if he didn't stretch out his staff towards her, she could die. And then she went out to him, and, and then and she, 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 he stretched out his staff like, oh, honey, I love you. Come on in the court and everything. And he said, what do you want, honey? She said, I want you to come to dinner tonight. He's like, you risk your life to invite me to dinner? And, yeah, and then so, uh, and then, and then uh, he was at dinner. He said, honey, what do you want? He said, I want you to come to dinner tomorrow night. And he came to dinner tomorrow, and then she told him all about the plan for her to be killed. And her people. And the king said, oh, that's not going to happen, honey, because I love you. And God good. And Jeremiah 1 verse 4, then the word of the Lord came to, to, to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. See, God knew you when you were still in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I sanctified you, or ordained you a prophet to the nations. God, God knew me. When, before I was born in my mother's womb, I was a 10-pound baby. Whew. Came out a 10-pound baby. Those was mamas that you had to have a 10-pound baby. God bless you. <laughs> you know? And, but I thank God my mom had, had me. Amen? Because there was a destiny, a plan for God in my life. And they, thank God that your mom had you. Because there's a plan and a destiny for your life. Then he said, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a youth. And But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go to all that I send you, and whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. And be not be, do not be afraid of their faces, for I'm with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and said to me, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. Say, I have set thee this day over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I'm ready to perform my word. Romans 8, verse 18 says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So sometimes we do go through suffering. Sometimes we do go through hard times. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all race, all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you might obtain. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's talking about walking with Jesus. And James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So we have to do the word. We have to do it. Now, uh, th- this is where I'm taking a little different turn. You're still with me here if you're going home? You, you, what I mean, going home? Have you fall asleep yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> the Bible says in Ephesians uh, 5, verse 8, do not be drunk with wine. Right next door, our, we, we are serving wine here. We're serving the new wine, salvation in Jesus Christ. Next door is Pete's beer. <laughs> they have all other kinds of uh, beverages. But, but here... We want you drinking of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? And that, that's, that's what will help you do what I just got done talking about. To run, uh, the, to the follow your desires, your dreams, and, the, and the have deeds. It's the Holy Spirit. Be not drunk with wine with, when this is the dissipation or excess, but be filled with the Spirit. To f- be filled with the Spirit, you must be born again. Jesus Christ must be your Lord and your Savior. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So can you say that with me today? If you, do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Do you believe he died for your sins? <laughs> Amen. Do you believe he is the Son of God? Can you confess Jesus as your Lord? Say, Jesus, Jesus. you're my Lord, Lord. and I'm going to live for you, and I receive you into my heart, 
in Jesus' name. Amen. If you did, you're saved. You're on your way to heaven. And you're a Christian. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. Because there's God the Father, there's God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we're in the dispensation now of the Holy Spirit. Is Jesus here walking around with us? No, Jesus isn't here walking around with us. Where's Jesus? He's in heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. And so there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? Can I have an amen on that? Amen. So, um, first thing you need to do is be born again. But you will never get where God wants you to be as a Christian without being filled with the Holy Spirit. So we need the Holy Spirit and be more filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's just not one filling. You need to get filled up because guess what? We leak. We leak. We leak. And you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can change you. I was talking to a lady today in the bookstore saying, oh, uh, 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 just get filled with the Spirit. Get filled with the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can change you. Can change you. Amen? Like this couple here. This couple is changing for the better. Amen? I'm changing for the better. We had a guy at our men's breakfast yesterday. And he was saying he was so messed up. And he shared about how God changed him by the Holy Spirit. He was a drug dealer. He tried committing suicide. He, he, you know, all kinds of things. He messed up his life here and there. But God changed his life. You know, God changed my life too. How many could say God changed your life? I mean, oh, look at that. He has every, God changed my life. My, I talked to my younger brother. He goes, Chris, you know something? Before you were Christian, you were mean. <laughs> you were one of the meanest guys I ever met. Guess what? I was. <laughs> I was, but thank God I made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I did it when I was 17 years old, and God changed my life. And God will keep changing you as you yield to the Holy Spirit, as you let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Are you here with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? And God can change you. The Holy Spirit changed Peter. Peter was an uneducated. He probably never even went to school. He grew up Jewish, but he probably never even went to school. He was a fisherman. He was an uneducated man. Never went to Bible school. Never went to college. Okay, he was a common man. He was a fisherman. But God used him mightily. God can use everybody in this room mightily. Everybody here. He can use you mightily. I'm not against education by, by any means. I believe in education. Okay. In Acts 4, verse 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said to them, rulers of the people and the elders. Okay. And we're, like I said before, we're, now we're in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit also, I guess what I'm saying, can change your personality. He can change your personality. Acts 4 verse 29 says, Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that, the, that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. The Holy Spirit made the disciples bold. And God can make you bold. God has not given us a spirit of fear or of timidity but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because in some ways before, I was, I was, I was some, some ways I was t- timid before, but God has not given us a spirit of fear. And the Bible says, the wicked flees when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So we can be bold, but we don't want to be arrogant, right? How many met arrogant people? Uh, uh, they, don't, they don't taste too good. And the Holy, so the Holy Spirit made the disciples fearless so they can then tell people about Jesus. Church, we need to be fearless in this day that we live in. Because you know out there in the world, they're not fearless. They're not fearless in what they believe. And we can do it, we can share it in love. And the Holy Spirit also too will give you joy. Some people, I just need some joy. So then they, you know, you don't have to drink alcohol to get some joy. You need to drink the Holy Spirit. You need to drink, drink, drink God. I think God, 
uh, 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 when, when these little girls come, uh, uh, Levy is always happy. She seems always happy. I don't know if she's like that at home. She's always just like, hey, we're going to have church today. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to have church today. I'm with you, Levy. <laughs> Praise God, somebody's happy here this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The joy comes from the presence of the Lord. And having the Holy Spirit. Acts 13, verse 52, and the disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Ghost. And if you need more joy, you need more Holy Spirit, not more wine. Amen. You don't need more wine. I see, I, I can, uh, there was a guy this week and he was in front of Faith's apartment and he was drunk, so drunk, he couldn't get up. And I said, hey, sir, my daughter's coming home soon. Can, you mind moving? He's like, yeah, I'll try to move. And everything. And he was all grumpy after all his drinking, just. And, and I was like, he said, okay, I'm going to move. And, and, then, and then, you know, he, he went back over there, couldn't even barely walk across the street, and they gave him more beer to drink. And I was like, oh. Then he went back and laid down again. I was like, oh, Lord. So I was just praying for him. And then he did find up and get up, and, and, he, and he got going, you know. But you don't need more wine. And you don't need more drugs. What we need is the Holy Spirit. That's what we need, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when they appointed the deacons in the church, you know, they, they made sure that they were full of the word and they were full of the Holy Spirit. You ever meet some people in church? They're like, do you want to sing in the choir? Do you want to sing in the choir? Well, if you sing in the choir, you better do everything I'm saying. Like, oh, gee. And I'd be like, no, that's okay. I'm not going to sing in the choir. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to sing in the choir. <laughs> you know, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Amen. The Holy Spirit makes you a better person. The Holy Spirit, when your wife is mad at you guys, you don't need a drink of wine or alcohol. You need a drink of the Holy Ghost. Ladies, when your husband is mad at you, you don't need a drink either. You need a drink of the Holy Spirit. You need more Holy Spirit. We need more Holy Spirit. So, amen? Amen. When you're in debt, you're like, oh, no, what am I going to do? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, they're coming to take the car away. Oh, no. You need a drink of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what's going to help you. When you suffer a loss, you know, I've done a lot of funerals, and I do understand when people have a drink, you know, and everything to calm their nerves and everything, but the person who can calm your nerves more than anybody is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will help you through that difficult situation, that, that difficult time. So the Holy Spirit has the power to change your life. Amen. When I was raising my girls, Joyce and Faith, and I had two, we had two beautiful little girls. Mitch and Katie had three beautiful little girls. And they were like perfect, you know. I mean, the perfect. And, but, you know, I wasn't the perfect dad, but I was always asking the Holy Spirit to help me. I asked the Holy Spirit to help me all the time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I understand we're, we're, not, we're not perfect yet. We're being perfected, but we're trying. And the Holy Spirit has the power to change your life. And the Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. So I encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit. Reverend Cho, he just passed away. Reverend Young Hai Cho, he was in South Korea he had the biggest church in the world. Had a million members. Can you imagine having a church of a million members? I was thinking, like, just, I can't even imagine all the headaches. You, you know? <laughs> I mean, we just have a little church and we, and we have enough headaches sometimes. <laughs> but, you, you know, and he had a million members. And so people came from all over the world and asked him, What's your secret? What's your secret of your success? He said, listen to the Holy Spirit. And they said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Come on, you gotta really tell us what your secret is. What, what, is, what is your secret? He said, listen to the Holy Spirit. 
And then he asked him the third time, well, no, no, wait, wait, wait. you got to tell us what your secret is. He said, listen to the Holy Spirit. But then also he said this. I remember reading this. He said, and some people say, he said, pray and obey. See, I, pray and then what? Obey. So I, I tell people sometimes, I said, did you pray about it? And they go, like, yeah, I prayed, Pastor Chris, I prayed. Yeah, but did you obey? I was like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we need to pray to him. And then what do we need to do? We need to obey. And when you obey, it just becomes easier and easier and easier. Easier and easier and easier. And you don't talk back. Yakety yak, don't talk back. <laughs> you don't talk back. Don't talk back. Okay, you obey. You obey, and things will go for you, go well for you. Because then when the Holy Spirit, the, the Word says, um, but you should receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you should be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In Luke 4, 29, Jesus said, before they were to go, you know when it says in Matthew 28, verse 18, when Jesus went up to heaven for the last time, go ye into all the world and uh, 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 preach the gospel, you know, teach to all nations. That was after the 40 days he was talking to them. That was the ascension. And that was 40 days after his resurrection. He was still hung around here for 40 days. And he told them, he told them to uh, before they went to go preach, to tarry in the city of Jerusalem and be d endued with the power from on high. And that power is the Holy Spirit. See, church, uh, as we're close, we can't do this by ourselves. We can't do Some people try to do the whole Christian walk all by themselves. And we can't. We can't do it by ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit in order to do it. Amen? Amen. Well, that, well, that's what God wanted me to share today. Amen. Let's bless you. Amen. So what do we need to do? We need to be doers of the word. How, how many doers we got here? This one. Oh, look at that. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll, we'll pray for all the rest of you. <laughs> uh, praise God. Let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for your word that's gone forth today. Father, we thank you and not return void, but accomplish what you please and it shall prosper where to you send it. And Father, we thank you for our salvation in Christ. And Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us. Father, I thank you. You love your people. You love your church. You love your family, the body of Christ. And Father, we just thank you and praise you. We pray that the Holy Spirit would bring to remembrance these words, Father God. And we just bless everybody as they go today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen, amen. Well, I love you. God bless you. Thank you all uh, for visitors coming, uh, uh, Katie and Mitch's family. God bless you all. Amen. Uh, all right, you're dismissed. <laughs>